Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we have a bit of a late manga review of chapter 937, Yukimaru on Oihagi Bridge. And this chapter really delivered on something I actually didn't think would happen, seeing a good old fashioned Zoro fight in classic samurai style on a snowy bridge. Yeah, I was pretty convinced after last week that we just cut to him having beaten Mr. Weapons Collector, whose name appears to be Gyukimaru, but something much more intriguing has occurred as the previously name dropped Kamas or the Manslayer just strolled in out of nowhere to deliver what feels like Zoro's first real wound in the New World Era. I mean, I might be wrong about that, I'm probably wrong about that, but when I saw that scythe pierce Zoro, I just felt like I hadn't seen such a thing occur in like the last decade or so of the series. Although even then, I can't help but get the feeling that striking Zoro played right into his hands. You know, he's the kind of person who would accept a wound like that in order to secure victory. And that demonic smile, beautifully drawn by the way, just seals the deal there. And so it would seem that this is the end of Kamazo the Manslayer, I mean, not the end, but unless something really bizarre gets pulled out, which you know, this is one piece, so that happens, it would seem that this character's threatening relevance has ended. It was somewhat unexpected to have him turn out to be an agent of the Shogun though. I thought that he was being quite blatantly name dropped previously, to be implied that he was one of the samurai that Kinemon and Co were searching for. But hey, that just shows that I know nothing ever, and why people are even listening to me speak right now is completely beyond me. But in all fairness, it's still not necessarily the wrong thought. He may have some tragic backstory, possibly to do with all the bandages on his face, and turn out to be a decent dude, bruh. With that said, I do like that he is an antagonist, though, because one always feeling somewhat lacking in that area in regards to people who aren't the beast pirates anyway. Up until now, Kyoshiro was really the only person who presented a decent threat. Although who knows if Kyoshiro is even that anymore, because one thing I do want to touch on the entire reason why this conflict with Kamazo began is because surely the woman with Otoko is Komurasaki. She has all of the classical Oda elements of beauty about her, which would mean that as anticipated, her death was faked. Meaning that Kyoshiro's agenda is backed being incredibly unknown because he's a mysterious bastard. But despite that, probably the most intriguing bit of information that came out of this whole Zoro section was undoubtedly the vague mentioning of the Black Blades and how Shusui became black. Now this has been mentioned before by a certain Drake Yul Mihawk, you may have heard of him, but since then, I think the general belief has been that he was referring to imbuing a sword with Haki, which may still have something to do with it, but in a more permanent manner. But I quite like this little tidbit because all of a sudden it gives Zoro a whole lot of room to continue growing in his own unique way. Because I mean, I'd be pretty keen to see the Wado Ichimonji or even an entire Kitetsu set of swords turn black under his command. I would think that it has to be Haki related though, because it's probably just a bit too coincidental that the Black Blades essentially end up with the same effect as temporary armament imbuement. It would also make a bit of thematic sense because that isn't the only piece of potential Haki intrigue during the chapter, as during the prisoner mine section, we have Luffy flashing back to Rayleigh's advanced use of Haki, where he took down an elephant and everything. And I'd always wondered about that because we haven't really seen anything like that since, although we did possibly see something similar previously during the Marine Food arc, where the three admirals invoked their Haki in a similarly arm stretched out formation. So it's nice to know that there are a multitude of improvements that can be made with arm and Haki, because it doesn't look like Luffy is trying to achieve the same sort of brand that Katakuri was using during their fight. Other than that, there's a pretty heavy piece of foreshadowing dropped during the Prisoner Mine segment, so heavy that it almost feels a bit too obvious, but it has to do with Queen's obsession with Oshiruko, to the point where it is almost important as the air he breathes. And wouldn't you know it, that just so happens to be the food that Olin is currently craving. There's no way that these two are not going to fight. You know, Big Mom bursts in, demands Oshiruko, Queen becomes profoundly offended, and then proceeds to get absolutely wrecked, allowing everyone to escape and causing untold chaos on Wano. I have to say I'm quite glad that foreshadowing happened though, because after reading the first page, I was left with a sense that that was a bit of a wasted scene, the whole Big Mom thing. I mean, Big Mom has a nice bonding moment with Tama, but yeah, it felt completely unnecessary until Queen mentioned his obsession, and then it became a big, yeah, oh shit moment. So yeah, overall, this chapter was very action oriented, which being a Zoro fan, I don't mind at all. I do feel like there might be complaints out there about the pacing because we didn't explore as many character groups with the sort of balance focus that has become standard, at least in this portion of Wano anyway, and it was more of an isolated chapter this week, which is fine for me anyway. But that pretty much does it for chapter 937. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of your amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also do check out my Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items with the proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. This has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.